So I, I, I want to start today. I, I, I want to start today by telling you guys a, a little bit. Well, something about me that I learned about myself recently. I learned this this situation about myself recently. See, my, my wife and I we've been we've been married for almost twenty years now. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We've been married for 20 years in August. It's going to be so great. We're going to, get, we're going to do some stuff. We're going to change the weather. Y'all know, how I, y'all know how I do. It could be raining right here, but it never rains in sun. See you when I get... Y'all, y'all not old enough to know. We got a millennial church. They don't know that Tony, Tony, Tony. I'm... So we're going to do some stuff. We're going to change the weather. We're going to go, you know, see some stuff we haven't seen before because it's, it's a celebratory time. Amen. 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 And it's so, so as, I, as I was thinking about what, we, what I wanted to teach today, I started to think about my, my wife and I and our relationship. And God uses a, a male-female relationship. He uses a husband and wife to teach you about your relationship with him. He educates us. Your wife is your education process. <laughs> Don't look at her. Don't look. Just look at me. I was going to say, look at her and say, no, don't do that. Keep you out of trouble. Amen. <laughs> but I, I realized that I'm, I'm, as, I, as I, I, I used to be zealous, really zealous to, to counsel people on marriage because I thought I, like, I, I, thought I knew I was ready, man. If you needed to talk about marriage, yeah, man. Me and my wife come to our house. We sit down across from me. We have we have cross couches on purpose. So we don't we, so we can share with you. <laughs> it's a couch right here and a couch right there. They're identical to each other. So you can sit over there and we can sit over here and we can counsel people that way. And so we do this sort of, or we did this <laughs> for a really long time. And we would counsel people and sort of try to help their marriage. And and as I, and as we're getting Longer into our marriage, I found that I have less things to say. I find myself, I used to have all these ideas and solutions, babe, and all these things or whatever. But as we've been married longer and longer and longer, I'm running out of things to say. It's starting to just be the same stuff over and over. And you say, well, what do you say? Well, I say this. Remain. And I'll, I'll talk it a different way, you know, I got the, a little bit of the gift of gab, I can, I can work it, word it, but it really comes down to Margot re- remain. Yeah, but, but, but you don't understand, because she don't do what she used to do, yeah, yeah but uh, remain. You don't understand, he don't provide like he used to do. Remain. And I find myself, I don't even know, I, I don't have the articulation or the right sort of words to enunciate in the way that I would like to enunciate to tell you more than I'm about to tell you right now. Remain, stay, work, stay, till, work on it. It's hard, it's tough, but stay. You got to stay in it. You got to stay in it. You got to stay in it. And I find myself, I almost want to refund. <laughs> said almost. I almost want to refund the people who come to us for counseling because this is my advice to you. Remain, 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 remain. Why is he talking about marriage? I'm going to help you in just a second. Stay with me. And, 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 and I feel like this, uh, thank you, Jesus. I feel like this sort of idea is permeating because it permeates in my life. No matter what I'm going through, no matter what I've been through, no matter, uh, oh, 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 on the days that the, 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 Point zero 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 one percent of the time when me and Pastor Tab not getting along. I find myself with a simple idea. Remain. Remain. Stay steadfast. Nobody said that, nobody said that she was gonna be perfect all the time. Nobody said that I was gonna be perfect all the time. Man, not all the time. But nobody said, nobody said, I don't know who told you that everything in your life was supposed to fit you. That everything in your life was supposed to mold to who you are. And when you get to a place where you start to believe that everything in your life molds to who you are, then you decide that you don't need to change ever. Because everything should just fit. 
Wonder what it'd be like if everything in your closet just fit the size you were. <laughs> would you ever try to change sizes? Ghost gyms would be out of business. I know some of us brothers, we'd be putting on those t-shirts, we're like, yeah, this still. This medium still working. This medium still working. But the truth is, your closet is a reminder that you are changing. Not that the closet is changing, not that the clothes are changing. The closet is a reminder that you are changing. And oftentimes, you, all you have to do is put on that pair of jeans to remind yourself to get back on track. <laughs> Try to put on that pair of jeans. To remind yourself to get back on track. To remind yourself to get back to the right, you know, to the way you used to do things. So you, you, but, but the truth is, what would happen if we just remained? If we just remain faithful, if we just remain consistent, if we just remain doing what God called us to do and being who God called us to be, if we just would, the Bible says if we were just steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the works of Christ. What if we just remained? And I, 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 think, I think that's my problem with Gomer Tab. As we start to read uh, through chapter one, and for those of you guys who weren't here last week, we've been talking about Hosea. And, and you, you guys just heard me read it. But God came to Hosea and he said, I need you to go marry this lady. And she's a prostitute. Truth is, he said, I need you to go marry a, past, a prostitute. And he picked this lady. <laughs> she was a known prostitute. She was known for being a prostitute. And he chose her and he married her and they had children together. But my problem with, uh, with my problem is not with Hosea. Hosea did what God told him to do. We don't necessarily have to identify with Hosea. It's easy to sort of see this and see this problem and say Hosea's got a problem. Hosea's got an issue. Hosea has to deal with the fact that he had to marry this prostitute. But the truth is, we got to start looking at it from the side of the prostitute. It's easy to look at some situation and say, well, this person is not perfect. But I wonder how many of us look at our situation and say, I'm, I'm, I'm the one that's not perfect. I'm the one that's, I'm the one that needs, thank God that Pastor Tab picked me. Lord have mercy. I thank God every day my wife is the catch. She's the prize. She picked me. As Soon as I start thinking I picked her, I'm going to end up in trouble. Right? She chose me, and I thank God every day, and I serve her, and I talk to her, and I relate to her as if she chose me. Yeah. Truth is, how much better, or, 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 the question is, how much better would you be as a Christian, as a husband, as a wife, as a friend, if you figured the person chose you, yeah. if they picked you? How much better, how much more would you cook? I mean, uh... How much more would you wash her car if you were just grateful to be picked, grateful to be chosen? But as we, as we think about Gomer, as I think about Gomer, I, I, I have a problem, Pastor Tab, because Gomer, Gomer is, she's in, a, she's in a dilemma. She wants to be saved. She wants to live right. She's married to a preacher. She's the first lady at his church. But she still has poor tendencies. She still has prostitution tendencies down here. There's still things in her mind and her heart. And I, I can't read it all to you guys. I want you to go and do your homework and read Hosea. But when we get to chapter 2, she starts saying stuff like, I, I want to go back to the streets. I want to go back and do my old ways. I want to go back and do my old things. I, I want to go back. She said, she said, I want to go back and get my oil and perfume. She said, I want to go back and get my oil and perfume. She said, I don't need this stuff, Hosea. I don't need none of this stuff. You can keep all this stuff. I know how to get my oil and perfume. She said, I know how to do it. I know how to get it. And, that, and, 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 that's, and that's how we are. We all have a chapter two experience. 
It's easy. Oh, thank you, Jesus. It's easy to deal with somebody in chapter one of their marriage. It's easy to deal with somebody in chapter one when they just now falling in love and everything's working and all the situations. It's easy to deal with somebody in chapter one in their ministry exploits when they can't wait to get to the house of the Lord. Somebody was here knocking on the door at 930 like open, open, open because they're early in their ministry. It's chapter two. It's chapter two when you're sick of this, when you don't want to deal with it anymore, when you're tired of this, when you're tired of trying, when you've tried and tried and tried, and I'm tired of cleaning his underwear. I'm trying to help everybody now. When you're tired, when you're tired, the, 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 the problem with most of us is what happens at chapter two. It's not chapter one. Chapter one is perfectly fine. We can deal with chapter one. We, can, we know how to pray in chapter one. We know how to give God glory in chapter one. We dancing all around, doing our cute little. It's chapter two. Many of us get to a chapter two experience. We get to a chapter two experience, and that's when we start deciding, it, I was better off when I... I got these tendencies that say, I know how to get it. I know how to do it. I could just do it my own. I know how, I know. Can't tell me nothing, Hosea. (laughs) But that's the truth about each and every one of us. Who is that pastor? Think he could tell me, he can't tell. I do what I want. I know how to live. I know how to get it. We all have our chapter two experiences. You rather you have it with your husband, rather you have it with your wife, rather you have it on your job, rather you have it with your friends, you, where you decide, well, I, I just don't need this. I just don't need to go through this. I know how to get what I need. And the, and, and the truth is we do it with God. In one day, out the next day. In one day, out the next day. Sinner, saint. Saint, sinner. Trying to placate in your mind why you, why you can't stay, why you can't remain. Fighting every day. How come I can't just remain? Every time. Uh, Paul said it like this. He said, he said man, I want to do good. The good I seek to do, I, I can't do. He said, and every time I try to do good, I end up doing bad. He said, oh, what a wretched man am I. In other words, he was saying, I ain't nothing. Because every time I try to, I ain't nothing. Because every time I try to do good, I end up doing bad. And some of y'all have been in that experience. Where every time you tried to do good, every time you tried to do right, you ended up in a bad position. Or you ended up back in that same situation. Or he called. He sent the inbox. W-Y-D. If you're over 40, don't worry about what that means. W-Y-D, smiley face, the big smiley face with the, with the teeth. Y'all know that's the, with the teeth. And, and you want to say, uh, nothing, just praying. <laughs> but Gomez on the inside. And Gomez starts to think, what can I get from this? Oh, yeah, y'all missed this. See, see the spirit of Gomez, oh. The spirit of Gomez always is willing to give, to get. She's not just a prostitute for the sake of being a prostitute. She is a prostitute because she thinks that's how she gets what she wants out of life. And she's willing to give this to get that. How many of you... How many of you are willing to give this to get that? And what is your this? And what is your that? Because it's not always the same. And it's easy to look at Gomez and say, I'm not willing to give that to get perfume and oil. But what are you willing to give? Because that's exactly what the devil wants. (laughs) 
first chapter is easy. The first chapter is love. The first chapter is compassion. The first chapter, I often meet people at our church in the first chapter. We introduce them to Jesus. Everything is good, man. They're in the men's restroom cleaning the toilet like, no, Jesus is good. I look at my watch. Can you survive chapter two? Can you, will you still be here? God is good at chapter two. Will you still be coming? Sometimes it's not even that serious. Sometimes it's, 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 hey, it's January. I'm going to go to church for six straight weeks. And then you won't see me for. Because every time I try to do right, go mayor. She rears her head. Every time some, well, I wonder sometimes what happened, what issue was it? Because a lot of times what happens in chapter two, Pastor Kev, is that some, some situation happens. Somebody get on your nerves in chapter two. Something happened. What triggers it? What is your trigger? See, if you don't know what your trigger is, you, you, if you don't know what your triggers are, listen, anybody can manipulate you in any kind of way. You got to know where your triggers are. You got to know. Oh, no, no, no. You can't. Can't touch, you can't touch me. Even Jesus said, don't touch me like that. You can't, you got to know where your triggers are. You got to know at work where your triggers are. You got to know a conversation you can be in and not be in. You got to know a situation. I get, I'm good in this conversation, but I got to go. All right, we was all good. You got to know when your triggers are. You got to know, sometimes time is a trigger for you. 1 a.m.? Oh, no, it's, I got to go. It's a trigger time for me. What? Oh, nothing. I got, I got to go. Well, I was talking to Russell. He said, uh, I got to close this window. I'll call you back. <laughs> know what that means. That's just a way to get off the phone. You don't have to do anything. Just, you need something to help you so that, so that somebody can't easily trigger you and get you to go back to your old ways. Sometimes anger is a trigger for you. You don't, you don't ever drink until you're angry. You don't, you don't never smoke until you're mad. And the devil don't have to make you smoke, he just have to make you mad. He don't have to make you drink. He don't have to make you cheat. He just have to make you angry. Or oh, a lot of men, hear me right here, ladies, earmuffs. <laughs> All you have to do is be disrespected one time and you feel like you gotta earn your respect. And here come Gomer. The whore that's buried on the inside of you. Peace starts to show itself as soon as you feel dishonored or unappreciated. And the question is, how, how, how many of you in here, oh, Jesus, can suppress the... I got to say this different, Pastor Tab. They go, I feel a brick spirit. I feel like somebody got a rock in their hand. How many of you can suppress the harlotry on the inside of you? The chapter two experience in your life, when it's just not going like you thought it should go, when God is not blessing in the way you thought he would be blessing. And Pastor Dante said, I will eat of the fat of the land if I gave a dime. And then I gave two dimes and God didn't bless me. Because the truth is, God blesses consistency. God is not, um, Pastor Tab, I'm having a hard time today. I feel like I'm not preaching to my church. God is not a trick. He's not a John. You can't just do one thing one time and get. You can't just do one thing one time and then get him to pay you for your performance. That's not how it works. 
that's not how it works. You got to push Gomer down. You got to stay faithful to a thing. You got to stay faithful to a thing. And God said, I'll bless it if you remain faithful to it. But I'm not going to bless anything that you're not faithful to. Why am I going to bless something that you're not even faithful to? Why am I going to be committed in a relationship that you're not even committed to? And if you're not committed with your love, and if you're not com committed with your, with your finances, because the Bible says that your heart goes where your treasure goes, says if you want to find your, your heart, find your treasure, wherever your treasure is, that's where your heart is. You know what I say? Look in your bank account. Look down it. Look down your bank account. That's what you love. God said, if you can't be committed, if you can't give your heart to a thing, you want me to bless that thing? Pentecost Sunday. I'm going to take it. I got to <laughs> take it a little easier. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> praying, praying, praying. Praying, a lot of times that's what we are. We're, we're praying, but we still have a spirit of prostitution. We're praying with a spirit of prostitution. If I say this prayer, God will give me this thing. If I do this, like if I do some little thing over here, if I go to this church or go to this service, then God will bless me. And, and that's not how relationships work. That's not how love works. God says, I need you to be committed to it. If you're not committed to it, I can't bless it. And you keep saying, bless me, God, bless me, God, bless me, God, bless me. And he keeps saying, remain, 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 remain. Remain, I'll bless you. Remain, I'll be consistent. See, see, you got to understand something. I want to help you right here. You, you, you can write this down. But God blesses, God blesses those who are consistent. God blesses those who are consistent. And we keep looking for power, but the, the true power comes in the power of same. The power of same. The power of same. We, we, we don't preach about the power of same in church. We say, and you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. But the truth is, you receive power when you are same. Consistent. Consistent. God blesses consistency. He needs to see if you're consistent. He needs to see if you'll keep listening. He needs to see if you'll keep your ear to the ground. He needs to see if you're going to keep praying about it. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availed much. And the reason we never get what we've been praying for is we're not effectual or fervent. We're just praying. We got one part. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous. I ain't, I'm not even going to touch that one. I'm just going to expect that you're righteous. But we're not effectual or fervent. And we expect God to bless us, but God blesses same. If I'm going to be consistent in my marriage, or if I'm going to be consistent in my relationship, or if I'm going to be consistent in my friendships, then God will bless them. If I'm inconsistent, God doesn't bless inconsistent people. The reason God only blesses consistent people is because God, uh, when God blesses you, he doesn't bless you. I, I'm trying to help you right here. He doesn't bless you just to bless you. He blesses you so that you can be a blessing. His intention is to bless you so that you can be a blessing. But if I can't count on you to be a blessing or to be in position to bless somebody else, then you're not qualified for a blessing. The truth is, I bless those who are consistent because I know I can use them to bless somebody else. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? So, so, but it's about consistency. It's the power of saying. We think that the power of Pentecost has to do with speaking in tongues. We think that the power of Pentecost is about speaking other languages. The power of Pente the power of Pentecost is the power of same. Pastor Dante, what are you talking about? Okay, Pentecost in Acts chapter. I'm trying to put this stuff together. This is really for the theologians right here. Even in your chapter two, can you be the same? 
See, see, Jesus dies. <laughs> Jesus dies at the end of the Gospels. We're going to say at the end of Luke. Luke uh, acts as a continuation of, of the book of Luke. If you read the book of Luke, and then you and, and the next book in the Gospels is the book of John because it's another Gospel. But the truth is that the same person who wrote Luke wrote Acts, and he and it's a continuation of a story. Okay, so so just for if, just for your reading, you can literally read the book of Luke and then skip John for a second and then read all of Acts, and that'll give you a real chronology about what's happening. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Okay, so the Bible talks about how Jesus died in the, in, in Luke ch chapter twenty four. Or in Luke, the last chapters of, of Luke, Jesus passes away. And then there's one chapter in Acts where in Acts, Jesus is gone. But the disciples remain. In Acts, Jesus has died. But the disciples remain. In Acts, Jesus has disappeared. But the disciples remain. And the problem with a lot of us Christians is that when Jesus leaves, we don't remain. When we, when we leave the church house, we don't remain. When we leave revival, we don't remain. When we leave MegaFest, we don't remain. And the problem is not MegaFest. The problem is same. See, because the same praise you had at MegaFest, you got to have in your midnight hour. The same praise you had at God Chasers, you got to have when Gomer comes out of you. The same prayer you had. On Sunday, you got to have it on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. The same conviction you had on Sunday, you got to carry it past I-35. It goes into Luby's with you. It's got to come out of Luby's. It's the power of saying. See, see, see. Let me, let me, let me help you. Let me, let me help you with something. I, I, I'm gonna help you with this, and then I, I, I'm gonna be done. Listen. So, so, something significant happens. Something significant happens at the end of Luke. At the end of Luke, something significant happens. Jesus dies. Wait a minute. I thought Jesus was supposed to be the king, the ruler. I thought he was supposed to take every, take over everything, and then he dies. I, I thought Jesus was supposed to be my strength and my comforter, but sometimes I feel like I can't hear him. Something happened. Something happened, and he disappeared on me. Sometimes people come to me, Pastor, I'm praying to Jesus, I'm praying to Jesus, but it feels like he doesn't say anything. What I tell them, keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. Stay consistent. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man of valid much. But Pastor, I'm serving. Pastor, I'm working, but I'm, I'm not hearing anything. I've been doing this. I've been in this marriage for years and years and years, but I feel like I'm not getting anything back from it. Something happens at the end. Something happens between chapter one and chapter two. Something is, is breaking. And for some of y'all, you came in this place and you're in that space right between chapter one and chapter two, and you're losing confidence. You're losing confidence. You're losing confidence in God. You're losing confidence in his ability to work in you. You're losing confidence. But God said, remain, 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 remain. If y'all don't hear anything else, if y'all don't hear anything else, I know you felt unloved and I know you felt unlovable. But the truth is, God said, I haven't gone anywhere. I'm there with you. But the truth is, you have to remain, remain. Remain. We sing the song, I will remain confident in this, that I will see the goodness of the Lord. But the truth is, if we just started with that one line, I will remain. You'll see the goodness, but you got to remain. You'll get the blessing, but you got to remain. He'll open up the window, but you got to remain. So, in that chapter... Chapter 2, just like in Hosea chapter 2, a decision has to be made. And what happens in the beginning of Acts chapter 2, you find the disciples remaining. They could have gone back, they could have all went back to fish or do whatever they did. You find them remaining. The Bible says when they were all at one place at one time, on one accord. See... 
See, we can't get the blessings of God because we're not in the same place at the same time on one accord. God, a lot of times, God is dropping a blessing in the place where you should be. You haven't gotten it because you're not in the place where you're supposed to be when he puts it down. He's putting a blessing in the same place at the same time. And when you get to the same place at the same time on one accord, that's where the blessing flows from. God doesn't put the blessing in your hand. He puts it in your reach. Got to get where you're supposed to get so that you can be blessed. Why haven't God blessed me? Why haven't God done it for me? You sound like Gomer. It's not Hosea's solely his responsibility. It's a partnership. The Bible says in chapter 2 when they were in the same place at the same time. It's not about, it's not about speaking in tongues. It's not about you. you this, these are the result of same. It is the result of effectual fervent, consistent love and ad admiration of God. It is the result. Pentecost is not it's not the gift. It's the side effect of consistency. The Bible says penta, penta, pent, pent, pent literally means 50. It means 50. Why they called it Pentecost is because it, let me help you. The, the, the reason they, we refer to it as Pentecost because it was literally 50 days from the crucifixion. It was 50 days from the crucifixion. On the 50th day, when they were all in the same place, at the same time, on one accord, God blessed it. How many of you haven't even made it to the fifth day before you change your mind about what God said about you? You haven't even made it to the 10th day before you change your mind about what God said about you. And God is at the 50th day waiting for you to get there like a good father saying, come on, baby, you can do it. Just keep on coming this way. And just like a child, hear me, just like a child, you see something and you're distracted by perfumes and oils. And what you think is the best thing and what you think is right in your heart. And the Bible says it like this. It says when there was no king, the people did what was right in their own mind. See, whenever you decide that you know what's better than God, you, you start going. Like a child. And God is still at the finish line saying, come on, I have it right here for you. I have it right here for you. I'll, I'll bless you. Come on, come on. I have it. If you just keep coming, I, I have it right here for you. My, my dog Kobe. He he won't return the thing that you throw. I don't think he's smart, man. <laughs> I don't know, man. I can't testify to that. My spirit don't agree with that. If you, if you throw, I, I did this with him yesterday. We went outside. It's just for a little while because I don't got a whole lot of time to be playing. I took the radio out of my car, man. I, I don't play. Y'all didn't get that. I took the radio out of my car because I don't play. Y'all didn't get that? Man, that's so good. Jesus, man. Where was I? Kobe. I take the ball. I have the ball in my hand. I have a treat in my other hand. This is how you teach. I have the ball in my hand. I have a treat in my other hand. I say, all right. I show him the ball and I show him the treat. Ball, treat. Ball. Ball. Take the ball, and I throw it. And he 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 loves to chase the ball. He you don't have any problem out of him chasing the ball. That's the easy part. He runs, he goes, and he chases the ball. He sees it. It's 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 so beautiful to him. It's a chapter one experience. And he'll chase that ball. Oh, like he'll go and he'll wrestle it down to the ground. He's little, so he got 
got to get his paws on the ball. Bite the ball. And he picks it up and I say, okay, now come back. And he'll start back towards me. And then he'll just put the ball down. Start running some other way. It's distracted, man. Here I am. I go again. I pick up the ball. Ball the treat. The ball the treat. The ball the treat. Go get the ball. He runs again. Go to he wrestles the ball down. He comes about halfway to me. Just hear something. I don't know, man. He just puts the ball down. He runs away. I, I, I was sitting in my backyard thinking, I think that's how God thinks about us. He says, here's the blessing. Here's the blessing. But here's what I need you to do. Here's the ball. Here's the blessing, here's the ball, here's the blessing, here's the ball, here's the blessing, here's the ball. He throws the ball, we, we all chapter one in. Running after the ball, we get it, oh, we get it in our mouths, and we're all happy with the ball. We never get the blessing because we think the ball is the blessing. The ball's not the blessing. You haven't done it. You haven't got it. You haven't finished. You got to remain consistent to really see the true blessing. You thought just the marriage was the blessing, but the marriage is not the blessing. 20 years later, that's the blessing. 30 years later, that's the blessing. You got to remain consistent. The bride is not the blessing. We get content with the bride. We get content with the job. You get blessed with a job, you pray, you pray, you pray, and some of us hate what we prayed for six months ago. Because we got the ball, and we thought the ball was the blessing. But the blessing is insane. I'm going to be consistent. I'm going to be consistent. Ask anybody in here who's been married longer than three months. They'll tell you that it gets better. It gets okay. It gets better. God, God starts to bless it. All of a sudden, you realize you, you, you got other hands that you didn't know you had. You got other feet that you didn't know you had. You got a second wind that you didn't know you had. See, the value of... Uh, uh, this is not a marriage seminar. I'm just trying to help somebody. The value of, of marriage is not that I'm always happy or that she's always happy. The value is that we're better together. The value is that when I'm down, she's up. And, and when she's down, I'm up. That's the value. But the truth is, God is trying to show you that same thing. He's saying, we're better together. We're better together. Take this yoke upon me and learn of me. We say, what is a yoke? Yoke is a thing that ties you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Ties you to him. He says, he says, he says take, take this yoke upon me and learn of me. He said, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I want to bless you, but you got to be consistent. I want to, I want to keep you, but you got to be consistent. You got to remain. You got to remain. You got to remain. Look at somebody and say, you got to remain. I, 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 God is not with you. He said, I won't withhold one good thing from you. You just got to get to it. Got to get to it. Amen. Is it, are y'all hearing me today? Remain. Remain. Stay faithful to something. Stay faithful to someone. Stay faithful to a friend. The Bible says faithful are the wounds of a friend. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. You got to understand what this stuff means. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. It means that even when I'm hurt, I'm still faithful. Even when I don't understand why they said what they said or did what they did, I'm consistent. I'm consistent. I'm consistent. I have a problem, Pastor Kev. I have an issue. I'm starting to be angry with inconsistent. Stay consistent. Be consistent in your relationships and your friendships as you move forward in your life. God, God loves you. He just wants you to be consistent. 
This is the moment, this is the season where you can recommit yourself to God. You can recommit yourself to your relationship with God. You can recommit yourself to praying. You can recommit yourself. Listen, all of us struggle. If you don't struggle with prayer, raise your hand. Thank you. Everybody in here struggles with prayer. But the truth is, God, God, he, he'll bless you in the struggle. He'll bless you in the struggle. Remain consistent. Remain consistent. He'll say, set an alarm. Pray for five minutes. I tell you, in relation to your tithe, start at 2%. Start at 3 Work your way up. It's not holy till it's 10 He's not obligated to bless it till it's 10. But work your way up. Realize that God will bless you if you remain consistent to something. What, 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 what are you consistent? Don't, don't let Gomer show up and pull you away from everything that God promised you. I, I don't have time for this, but I want to make one more point. I'm going to come down. Um, listen, so I want to talk about this more next week. But Gomer did, she went back. She went back to the streets. Gomer and Hosea, just in case you don't understand what's happening here, Gomer and Hosea is God and the people of God. He's teaching us a lesson. He's using the prophet and his prostitute wife to teach us a lesson about us. And, and Gomer makes a decision. She says, I'm gone. I'm, I'm out of here, man. I know how to get my perfume. I know how to get my oil. I'm, I'm done with this. I'm going back. And Gomer, uh, excuse me, Hosea is sort of okay with it. He's like, I don't want to marry that person in the first place. So he sort of shrugs his shoulders. Chapter 3. God says, go get your wife back. Go get your wife back. Now, Hosea probably never would have went to get Gomer back. But Hosea is not God. God will always come back. God will always come back. He'll always come back. He'll always come back. He, he is consistent. I thank God that even when I'm not consistent, he is consistent. I thank God that even when I'm changing all the time, he is never changing. He is consistent. So much so that he said he'll leave 99 to come get me. He told Hosea, go get her back. Go get your wife back. Whatever you got to do, whatever you got to pay, whatever ransom there is, go get your wife back. Pentecost, Acts chapter 2, is Jesus saying, I'm coming back. Acts chapter 2 is the Holy Spirit as a representative for Jesus to say, yeah, I'm coming back. I'm coming back. I haven't forgotten about you. And I know it's been 50 days. And I know you thought it was over. And I know you thought Jesus actually died on the cross. But I'm telling you now that the promises that Jesus made you are yes and amen to those who have been consistent. He said, I'm coming back, 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 I'm coming back. I'll show you, I'll give you representation, I'll show you, I'll send the Holy Spirit, I'll show you, I'll give you tongues of cloven, tongues of fire, I'll show you. And when you are on one accord, in the same place, at the same time, doing the same thing, I'll bless that thing. When you are consistent, because I'll be consistent, I'll always come back. I thank God that we serve a God who always comes back. Right now, right now, God is asking for your consistency. He's here. He's here. He's here. He's here at this moment. You know how I know because the Bible says, well, two or more gather together in his name, that also shall he be. So, so, so hear, and hear me right here. I don't need to invent fire. I don't need to recreate Pentecost on Pentecost Sunday. I don't have to do that. He's present. He's already here. He's not, he's not coming into the world. He's in the world. He's here. He's alive. You want to know that God is alive? Talk to your neighbor. Everybody in this church got a testimony about what God has done for it. And if you and if your neighbor say no, I don't know, move. You want to 
to know God is alive, stop your heart from beating right now. If you can stop your heart from beating, then I'll admit that you're in charge. But if you cannot, you got to admit that God's in charge. God's here. He's here in this place. He says, come back. Come back. That's all you got to do. Come back. Come back. Come back. Come back, go mayor. Come back. Come back. Come back. I know you have tendencies. I know you want to do what you want to do. I know you, I know you, I know you know how to get it. I know you know how to do it yourself, but listen, but listen, there's so much that I have for you. There's so much that I have for you, but you got to come back to me. Come back, come back, come back. I'm calling you to myself. Come back.